So, yeah, so let's pull some cards, shall we? Um, like I was saying, really do enjoy this deck. Um, would not necessarily buy a celebrity deck. Uh, typically, I was really shocked. This is how I knew that I was a diviner and not a card reader and that I definitely wasn't a deck collector. Um, I love the artwork of Gustav Klimt. If you don't know who Gustav Klimt is, Google him. Uh, he's a very famous piece, many very famous pieces, but one in particular called The Kiss that I just absolutely love. I just... When I learned about it in art, art history, I don't know why, because I am typically not a fan of modern art. I like fine art. Um, I like uh, surrealism and realism. Um, and uh, that's definitely not his art style. And yet I just love it. I think it's the bougie in me. I think it's the Leo in me because everything he does is like very gold and very regal looking. Everybody looks like they're like a king or queen and like bedazzled robes. Um, so I think that that the Leo in me just likes how like flashy his art is. Um, but whatever the reason, I absolutely love his artwork. So when I saw that there was a Gustav Klimt deck, I was like, oh, my gosh, I have to have it. Right. So I get the deck and I immediately was like, oh, my God, I hate this. I hate this. Like the these cards literally are just for the purpose of being pretty. Like that's not going to work. Um, yeah, I, I try to keep up with the kids, you know. I'm 38, so there's definitely the kids out there. Um, but I was like, this sucks. Like, I thought I was going to love it because I love his art. But I quickly realized that as a divination tool, it did nothing for me. My spirits don't speak in Klimt. <laughs> you, know, you know, they were like, what are we supposed to do with this? Like, how are we, how are we supposed to translate messages with these pictures? These do nothing. What are you going to tell a client or what, or yourself even? So um, I donated that to the shop. I was like, oh, man, damn. Um, but, yeah, I think that's when I realized that, like, um, I'm, I'm probably always going to only want decks that really allow me to translate messages. So, anywho. Shall we do that? And this is a surprise tea and tarot. So if you are having tea, um, drop it in the comments. What are you sipping on? Uh, I am drinking my skinny spice, my weight loss management tea. Okay. I'm working on like some weight loss spell work or some weight loss rituals. Would you guys, let me know if you'd be interested in this because I'm thinking about doing this. Um, in the coven, we share spells with each other. And I will share my spells with the coven and I do so for free. For people who are not in the coven, would you want me to make my spells available for purchase? I can make them available in my online portal where my classes are. And just how my classes are evergreen and like once you purchase them, they're yours forever. I could do that with my spells as well, I realize. I could like write out my spells on like a nice background, like made on Canva. So you could print them out and put them in your book of shadows if you wanted. Or you could just read them on the screen. Um, but if I made my personal spells available, like would you be interested in having them? Coven members get them for free, but they also pay $9.99 a month to be in the coven. So they're essentially paying for them. But for people who are not in the coven and don't want to pay $9.99 a month or are not interested in being in the coven, if you wanted to just like one time purchase my spells, um, would you be down for that? Would you be interested in that? Should I make them available to the general public in that way? Let me know what you think. If enough people are down, then I'll do it. If not, I'll just keep sharing it with the coven. Um, but yeah, if people who are not interested in the coven want my spells, like, would you want those? I've been thinking about that lately. So I've been working on some more, like, uh, everyday type spells. So I'm working on, like, a weight loss one. Has anybody got time for diet and exercise? Like, what is the point of being a magical practitioner if I can't, like, cast for, like, some weight loss or, like, you know, 
like just everyday practical shit. So let me know what you think about that. Um, okay. Full moon in Capricorn, double full moon in Capricorn, smack in the middle. Coming up on the 21st is the next one. Just taking a moment to give honor and thanks to my guides, guardians, angels, demons, ancestors, spirits, all of those vibrations that walk with me or come to me when called. I want to start with the fire signs. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, or Rising, or Mars. I think I did that the last time, too, and it felt right. Mars being the planet of action, because I want to know, how should the fire signs take action? Where should they direct their energy in terms of productivity? and work product, what should they be working on between now and this next full moon? And where are they going to find reward? How do you get to the bag? Or if money is not the reward that you seek, the compliments, the praise, etc. Mm. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> All right. So while I was shuffling, uh, the five of wands in reverse popped out as I was asking the question of where should you put your energy? How should you approach your productivity? And my next question was, how do you get to the bag? How do you get to the reward? And out came the seven of swords. And the immediate message that I got um, was move in silence. This is a move in silence message. We're being told to put down any type of conflict or energy. So fire signs, if there's anything related to your productivity that involves any type of squabbling or disagreement or back and forth with anybody, whether you're actually doing that or you're considering doing that, maybe you were thinking about calling somebody out on um, not carrying their full weight or their full, you know, responsibility. Maybe you've been doing somebody else's job for them at work, or maybe you've tried to partner or collaborate with people to build something and they're not really putting in as much energy as they should. 
or as you are, and you've been thinking, you know, now's the time to to talk about it. Now's the time to get into it. Now is not the time to get into it. Coupled with the Seven of Swords in particular, this is really saying what you are working on and what you're thinking about really needs to be your business right now. You want to be sly a little bit, okay? Move like the fox. You want to play your cards, keep your cards close and not let other people know what you're working on. I feel like some of you might be planning to leave work, actually, interestingly enough, because perhaps it's not as rewarding as it's supposed to be. You're not getting paid as much or you're not receiving the credit or the praise that you deserve. And so you're thinking about leaving work. Um, any of these types of thoughts and plans, you really want to play those close to your chest. Keep those to yourself until you absolutely have to. You do not need to let people know what you are working on. And those conversations that you were planning to have, you can go ahead and just make peace with them and just say, you know what, it is what it is. I'm not going to bother because you're not going to get out of it what you would want your other thoughts about like just leaving or moving on or going into business by yourself or working on the project on your own those are all good choices and much better choices than trying to continue to convince other people to participate and get on your level okay so make peace with that don't even go down that road don't even bother with having those conversations Focus on what is best for you and what your next move needs to be and then keep it to yourself. And so the first thing I heard when I saw these two cards together, I was like, oh, this is like a move in silence moment. But the five of wands reverse came out while I was shuffling. Right. So I was like, OK, spirit, can I have a little clarification about the five of wands? I just want to make sure. And then uh, this is what we pull. <laughs> OK, the ultimate move in silence card. All right. The hermit major arcana card. So. This is a you time. This is time for you to go within. People do not need to know what you're working on until you are uh, done with it, basically. They don't need to know the details. Um, you don't need to try to have argument or negotiations with people. I'm a fire sign. This is resonating very deeply for me right now related to work and the shop. You don't need to have negotiations with people. You don't need to have conversations. You don't owe them anything, basically. You don't owe them any explanation about what you're doing. You don't owe them two weeks notice. You don't owe them sticking around or helping to train the next person. Like you don't owe them anything. So make your arrangements and focus on what is best for you and ask yourself the question of whether or not you're being properly compensated, praised, rewarded in what you're doing. And if you're not, just drop them and move yourself in the direction of where you would get that. And then keep it to yourself until you absolutely have to. Okay? Because, yeah, there's no changing the situation uh, or like there's no changing people in the situation. So it's up to you to decide that you no longer want that situation and you're ready to go embark on something else for yourself. You owe no one anything. So if that resonates with you guys, I think I'm live on YouTube. You can always leave a super chat as a way of saying thanks. If you're watching this on a replay, you can always leave a super thanks, which is really beautiful. Okay. Um, someone asked me the other day, let me see if I can do this. Yeah. If you don't want to leave a super chat or a super thanks on YouTube because they take a little chunk or you don't have like your financials set up through YouTube, um, you can also say thank you through Cash App. I finally got one. Like key, like I, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be down with the kids. Okay, I don't want to be one of those older people that like loses touch. 
And I was like, damn, a witch is really going to be 40 in a couple years. Like, that's kind of crazy. Um, I'm definitely, you know, like, we're moving on up there. You know what I mean? And uh, I definitely don't want to carry myself like a kid. I'm so grateful for the wisdom that I have. I'm very grateful to be 38. I wouldn't change it for the world. Um, but I was like, I should probably, like, I haven't gotten into TikTok yet. That's, like, the final frontier for me. My shop is on TikTok. But I usually ask the shop witches to post on there so that I don't have to. I am not on TikTok. I feel like that really would be like the next level of like keeping young. <laughs> but I did start a cash app. So if any of these messages resonate with you and you want to say thank you, show me support, um, you can do it through there or you can super chat right here on the tube. And I thank you in advance. All right, fire signs. Now, why don't we do Wata? Wata. I'm a few months older than you. 40 is knocking. I know. It's knock, knock, knocking right on the door. You know what I'm saying? But you, we listen, girl, we got the same disease, okay? Young forever, 21 forever. <laughs> it's the melanin, okay? Um, no one ever believes uh, that I am as old as I, as I am. So as long as that keeps being true, I'll be happy about that. And you know what? And when it stops being true, when my exterior catches up with my interior and I begin to look my age at some point that's going to happen, I imagine that's going to be beautiful too. That'll be just fine. Water signs, water signs, water signs. Water signs, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Mars. How are we being productive? How do we get to the bag? Ooh, okay. Yes, my dear, get some rest. Have a great night. You can always watch the replay if you still can't sleep. I'll be up all night watching. I watch YouTube like TV. I don't really watch TV. I got rid of my cable like years ago. So um, I love a good long live. Okay. Water signs. Well, you know what? It's so interesting because I said, you know, I'm not an astrologer, but this week feels very disruptive. Like this week feels like a lot of things are falling apart and crumbling and things that you may be used to are like shifting and there just seems to be a lot and it's, it's, it's kind of a heavy energy, but I do truly feel like it is preparing us for some really big opportunities and some really big rewards if we're able to lean into it and not let these um, endings or these moments of violence, these moments of disruption, like get us down. Okay, because I feel like freeing yourself from some routines um, is where you want to put all of your energy or a good chunk of your energy for the next week or so as we get ready for this full moon. So. Water signs, you're telling yourself that you can't do things differently. You're telling yourself that you can't do things differently, that you have to keep doing things a certain way, that you have to keep working at a certain place, or you have to keep a certain schedule um, because of this, that, and the third, or that you can't do certain things because you're limited by this or that. And that's not 100% true, okay? It's not 100% true. I don't want to minimize the difficulty 
of breaking out of some of these patterns, cycles, and things that you are kind of used to. Um, because let me tell you something, as somebody who made the decision to end a 12-year-long marriage, I absolutely know what it is like in terms of how difficult it can be when you need to free yourself from something that you have been doing for a very long time or that has been a very serious part of your life that you almost can't see yourself not doing. And that's where it, where you're at right now, water signs. There are some routines, some habits, um, perspectives even, because it's not just our physical, but also how we are thinking is limited and tied. Um, but it's limited and tied not because it's impossible to break free from these things, but mostly just because you've been doing them so long, or you've been looking at things a certain way for so long that you really just don't know what it feels like to do things in a different way or see things in a different way. So I think the first thing for you to do, Water Signs, is to acknowledge, first of all, that that might be happening. Right? What's the first step of AA is acknowledging that there's a problem? I think that's the first step for you, Water Signs. The first step for you is to take all of those things that you're telling yourself are impossible or that you're telling yourself you can't do because I've got to do this or because my schedule's like that or because I can't leave this or because I have to pay these bills or because blah, blah, blah. All of those things that you're telling yourself are you can't do, etc. First, you need to admit to yourself that there is a different reality that at the present moment, as mean as it might sound for me to say this, you are choosing to sit in. Because it is a choice. I think it was Thomas Hobbes. I think it was Thomas Hobbes that said, we always have a choice, even if there's a gun put to your head you still have a choice. They might be shitty choices, right? One choice might be to get shot in the head, but you still have a choice. So most people would say, oh, I don't have a choice. There's a gun to my head. But no, you do have a choice. The other choice is to get shot. So you always have a choice, no matter how impossible it might seem to choose something else. And it might seem like, oh, I literally don't have a choice because I have to do things this way. But the truth is that you do have a choice. It just might not be easy. But the most rewarding choices are the hard choices. And that's what we are asking Spirit about in this reading. How do we get to the bag? Whatever the bag is for you. Money, compliments, praise, respect, title more followers, more reach, more friends, whatever the reward for this work is for you, we want to get to that bag. So if you want a reward, you are going to have to make the more difficult choice. And this is about freeing yourself from those things that you are telling yourself you can't. And the reward that follows is huge. The reward that follows is huge. By the way, this is Rachel too. She put herself in her deck as the Empress, as you should, right? I would do the same. Um, and how you get to the bag is about creativity, deep creativity. This is more than just like, oh, I want to paint a painting or like, oh, you know, I want to knit on the weekends. You have something really big you want to birth. You have something really big you want to create. It would be a complete departure from your current lifestyle. You're very welcome, Bambi. Thank you so much. Um, resonating with you, Key, I see. Uh, you guys have something big that you want to birth. It would be a very, it would be a big departure from how you are used to living your life. You might need to relocate. You might need to leave a job behind completely. You might need to completely change industries or fields. Um, you might need to let go of certain relationships. Um, 
whatever it is, this isn't just a small expression of creativity. You really want to birth something new entirely and that is what's making you feel like you can't because it's so big and it would require so much of your time and energy to do that it doesn't seem like it would be possible to invest that kind of time and energy while you still have all of these other things going on but the question is which reality are you trying to live in that is the hard part especially for those of you that are spiritual entrepreneurs, because I know because I do spiritual business coaching, a lot of you are. Um, when you are in that in-between place of deciding between like the nine to, I was just literally writing about this today to some of my um, like community members and clients. I was reaching out to a few people and I was literally saying this, when you are in that in-between place of like, okay, I have a full-time job. It pays my bills. I need to pay my bills. But I have this other thing that I really know is my calling and that I really wish I was doing. But how do I let go of the nine to five without like starving, you know, and, and doing this other thing? And it's obviously a super huge decision to make. And I am not encouraging anybody to like put themselves in a place of danger and like drop their source of income or whatever. But what I am saying is if you're serious about your new reality, becoming your new reality. You have to start making decisions from the place of the new reality, even if it's not there yet. What we end up, what we tend to do is we tend to say, like, for example, okay, I have a nine to five, but I really want to start a candle company. I will look in the mirror and I will say confirmation, you know, affirmations to myself. I have a candle company. I am starting a candle company, blah, 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 blah. But then when something comes up, and we need to make a decision. We don't make decisions like the candle company owner. We make decisions like the nine to five employee. So a fair will come into town where you could sell your candles. And instead of signing up for the fair and telling your job, sorry, find somebody to cover me that day. I know I don't have time off, but what it is, what it is, kick rocks, if you fire me, you fire me, I don't, whatever. I'm going to go do this thing. Instead of doing that, we say, well, I can't because I have a job and I have to pay my bills and I have to go to this job. That's not actually true. You don't actually have to go to the job. It's just going to be really hard to make the decision to not and go do that fair and go sell your candles at that festival. It might be hard to find coverage. It might be hard to have to buck up against your boss. It might be dangerous. You might be in danger of, of, of repercussions at work, whatever. You might miss a paycheck or have a dock on your paycheck and result. And you don't know if at the fair you're going to make uh, the same amount of money to recuperate what you lost from that, that lost workday. Whatever it may be, but you still have the choice. And if you're serious about that candle company, you have to make decisions from the perspective of what's best for me as the candle company owner, not what's best for me as the employer. I don't even want that job. But we tend to, out of fear and comfort, make decisions from the old reality, even though we're saying we want the new reality. You have to start actually making decisions from the place of the new reality. And that is how you will be able to transition from one to the other. The more you make decisions from the new reality, the more the old reality will fade away. Yeah. If you keep calling out of work to go sell candles at festivals and fairs, guess what? At some point, your boss is probably going to fire you. And while that will be the most scary thing in the world, it will probably be the biggest blessing you've ever had. So that's that one of times. That is how you get to the bag. This full moon in Capricorn. If that resonated with you, I appreciate all the thank yous. You can send a super chat, super thanks, hit the cash app. I am open and ready to receive. Okay. Air signs, air signs. Uh, 
What does spirit want to say to the air signs? Libra, Aquarius, Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, or Mars. Where should your energy be directed? As we approach this full moon in Capricorn, how do you get to the back? Hmm. Okay. I've been wearing some Moldavite uh lately, and this is um Feel like I understand now why I felt so called to wear it. Um, everybody's shit is getting shaked up. <laughs> Who is that? Kay Michelle? You're shaking the table. Spirit is shaking the table. Or maybe it's not spirit. It's really the, the astrology of the time. Just the energy of the universe is in a very shifty place where some really big changes are happening. So air sign, you are also being told to go within but this is not so much necessarily a move in silence message because you might actually benefit from some support in the sense that it would probably be a good idea to let people know what you're going through so that they can not tempt you and things like that. But uh, we we need some time to ourselves. Aren't these card, card, cards gorgeous? Okay, how we can be protect, productive or where we need to put our energy. We have the hermit coming up once again and getting to the bag involves the devil in reverse. So we're letting go of some addictions or negative attachments. And this is a journey that you are taking on your own. And the reason why I say you, even though it's a journey you're taking on your own, you might want to tell other people about it is because this feels like the type of thing where if the people around you don't know that you are doing this, then they might tempt you in ways that you really don't don't need to be tempted right now. All right. So this is like if someone suffers from alcoholism, you want to let everybody know around you that you are detoxing, that you are quitting so that maybe they don't invite you to the company party or maybe they don't offer you a drink when you you know, show up at their house or what have you. So the people around you need to know that you are going through this level up, that you are going through this, um, this moment of healing and of letting go of negative attachments so that they can um, support you as best they can. But it is definitely a journey that you're enduring on your own. So it might not be the case that other people can really relate necessarily. Um, and that's fine. They may not understand what you're going through or why you need time by yourself or why you're not going out or why you're not doing this thing or why you can't just be like, you know, people a lot of times, sometimes people don't like to be by themselves and they'll try to rope you into stuff, you know, where it'll be like, oh, come do this. And you're like, mm, no, I can't. They're like, oh, God, come on, I'll pay for you. Like, oh, come on, I'll, I'll do in order for you to come. But you have to hold strong and say, no, I just don't need to be in that environment. I don't need to participate in those types of activities because I'm, I really need to, now is the time to make a change. I just heard I'm tired of myself. So some of you air signs are literally like you're, you're tired of yourself. You're sick and tired of your own attachments and addictions or whatever it is that you know, whatever came to your mind when I first said that, that you were like, oh, that's that thing. You're sick and tired of yourself. You're tired of making excuses. You're tired of recovering from whatever it is. And it feels financial for a lot of you. Seven of Pentacles in reverse, because I asked for clarification on what the devil in reverse meant. And we got the Seven of Pentacles in reverse. So whether you are a shopaholic, whether you're irresponsible with your finances, you tend to spend without planning. 
you tend to live paycheck to paycheck, even though uh, you know that it would be possible to not live that way if you made some better choices. Um, there might be some debts that you are not satisfying and like the interest or the payments are just further holding you down and you would be able to get out of it if you would bite the bullet and like work on those, just work on them, whittle them away, whittle them away. But that would mean perhaps doing some other things less and you're not really interested in that. But but this is very important. So letting people around you know, like, listen, girl, I know we always go on this trip or like, okay, I know we go to like boys night at the bar every other week or whatever, but y'all not going to see me for a little while because I need to make a change and it needs to be a dramatic change. And the only way to do that is to give myself a real, real reset. And so I can't even play around with like, oh, like, oh, but I'll pay for you. No, if you pay for my first round of shots, guess what? I'm going to get drunk and I'm the type to be like, shots on me, next round up. Like, I know that about myself. So you could pay for a whole bunch of stuff. I'm still going to find a way to have to pay for something. Or you might get all the drinks at the bar, but guess what? Now I'm tipsy and my lazy ass is not trying to get on the train. I'm going to take an Uber home, right? So like, I can't even go. I, I just... It's not for me to even be there because no matter what, I'm going to spend money. It definitely feels very financial. For others of you, this resource message is not about funds or finances, but about your time. Your time and your energy. And I just heard uh, living rent free, your mental space, your mental space. So there are cer certain circumstances where... No matter how much you try to not let it like bother you or weigh you down, if you spend time in those environments or with those people, you come home and you cannot get it out of your head for like days after. And you have to be aware of that and have the ability to say to people, I ain't coming over there. I love you, but I'm not coming over there. I'm staying inside. I'm staying in my house. Because anytime I go over there, it drains the hell out of me. Even if so-and-so is not there, even if we don't talk, even if whatever, it drains the hell out of me just to be in that presence. I'm reclaiming my power. I'm taking back my time. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm, I'm making a change. The change starts now. I'm disconnecting from these things that are weighing me down. Hi, Dr. Sally. No, you may not. I am pulling cards for the elements right now. Um, I don't do those types of readings on on uh, line, really. Um, but you are more than welcome to book a private reading with me. Uh, if I set this up right, then there should be links in the description box for how you can go to my website and book a private reading with me. But I appreciate that you trust me enough to ask me for one. And thank you for being here. You got that air signs. If you got that, you can always say thank you to me and to my spirits with a cash app, super chat, super thanks. Liking this video, hearts in the comments. I take it all. However you wanna show the love. All right, so that leaves earth signs next. Earth signs, this full moon is about you, Capricorn, Taurus, and Virgo, sun, moon, rising, and Mars. Asking spirit where you should put your energy for this full moon in Capricorn. What would benefit the most from the energy of productivity? How do you get to the bag? Oh, my God, are you kidding me? Oh, snap. Y'all saw me shuffle the hell out of these cards, right? Okay. 
Shaking the table, shaking the table. All right, so earth signs, we have the hermit, but this time in the reverse. We also have the seven of discs, but this time in the upright. Very interesting. Uh, you almost have an exact opposite message from the air signs. Uh, it's time for you to reemerge. It's time for you to step out of that place. You have a tendency of wanting to be indoors, wanting to be inside. And probably for the last moon phase or so, that is what you have been doing. Um, you haven't been on the scene as much, you haven't been seen as much, and you haven't been putting as much energy or effort into uh, the areas of your life that bring you income, that bring you reward, that bring you pay, compensation, praise, title, respect, whatever. You kind of have been slacking a little bit, and it's time for you to step out, to step back out on the scene. You are so welcome, Sabrina. It's time for you to step back out on the scene, okay? You've done the work. You've done the planning. You've done enough planning. Um, you understand me, Virgo? You've done enough planning. Virgo, do you hear me? This is your card. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Put the pen down. You have done enough planning. I promise you. Nobody plans like a Virgo, but Virgo will be planning until the end of times and never do anything. It's time to take action. It's time for you to actually start planting, uh, not even planting seeds. The seeds have long been planted. This is not something new that you're starting. Okay, this is not a new venture for you at all, Earth Signs. This is something you have already been cultivating, already been working on. I just feel that you were slacking on it for a little while because you felt like you needed to take some time to like go back to the drawing board or, you know, work on some new offerings or things of that nature. And, you know, we love you. We love you, Earth Signs. You guys tend to to really deliver and really do things well because of all the planning that you do, because of all the energy that you put into getting things just right. But at a certain point, you have to put down the pen and actually go and do the thing, actually go and bring the thing out into the world. And that is what you are doing. Most seven of pentacles cards don't feature somebody who's pregnant. This is very significant, okay? This is letting you know that the, the time is nearing. The time is nearing. And so now this would be the time to get out and start telling people about what you're working on, start marketing yourself and what you're working on. You might have a final project that is like not quite yet ready to debut, but you do not want to wait until it is ready to debut. You want to start telling people about it now. Let them know that it is coming. I'm hearing pre-order. I'm hearing pre-sale. Um, I'm hearing marketing campaign. Um, so this is you telling people that something is coming, getting them excited for it, laying the land, positioning yourself in a place where everybody is waiting to see what happens when this baby drops. What happens when you actually come out? What have you actually been working on? So tell as many people what you are working on. Now is the time. Do not be embarrassed. Do not be worried. Do not be afraid that it's not a perfect project just yet or a finalized product just yet. Let people know about it so that um, you can get the support from them to like make it to the finish line. Okay. And it's going to be super important that you cut out the negative self-talk. Cut out the negative self-talk or if this is another person to cut out anybody who is dropping seeds of doubt into your mind. And with this being the queen, I just heard mother. And I know for some of you, this might be your actual mother, which really fucking sucks. Really, really sucks. The idea of having to cut off somebody in your life as, as important and as significant to you as your own mother. But the seeds of doubt that they are planting are literally weeds. 
they are weeds. You see that? These weeds popping up that are threatening to choke your tool, threatening to tie you down, threatening to prevent you from doing what you are doing. These seeds of doubt are weeds. So whether they're coming from you and you're doing negative self-talk or you have a domineering, overbearing, um, unkind individual in your life that is constantly doubting you and, um, you know, telling you all the reasons why not, telling you all the reasons why you're not going to make it or why this isn't a good idea, you have to absolutely disconnect yourself from that person because they are holding you back big time. Big time. Okay, so getting to the bag for you is cutting out negative self-talk or the negative seeds being planted by people around you, coming out of your shell, out of this period of hibernation, and starting to tell the world about what it is you are working on, even though it's not finished. That is going to earn you far more compensation, reward, praise, whatever it is that is the bag for you then keeping it to yourself and waiting until it's perfect to tell everybody about it. Once it's perfect and you tell everybody about it, nobody's paying attention. They don't know because you never mentioned it. And they're like, oh, oh, okay, that came out of nowhere. Okay. All right, that is everybody. <sighs> I feel better. <laughs> I feel better. So I'm going to take a moment to release my spirits, give honor and thanks to all of those high vibrational and powerful beings that walk with me and come to me when called, help me to do this work, help me to translate these messages. I pray that they're received with clarity by everyone who is listening in right now or who watches the replay. I pray that everybody understands the importance of reciprocity so that this community can continue to thrive and I can continue to do what I need to do to lead it. And I thank them all in advance. And I send all of you off into the evening with lots of love and light. As I will, so let it be. All right, which is, thanks for hanging out with me these late hours, just about the witching hour. I appreciate you all so, so much. And um, yeah, thank you for letting me cry it out. And um just share this space with you. Thank you all for being here, especially those of you who've been here for a long time. I appreciate you so much. Like I said earlier, if you're not on my mailing list or my shop's mailing list, please do get on it. I have a very important announcement on Wednesday. Um, I want you all to know about it so that even if you, um, even if it's not for you, you can spread the word and share it with the next witch. Um, we need your support to make sure that the neighborhood that we're in, but the world at large knows that witches are not going anywhere. We're not going anywhere. Um, and if any of these messages resonated with you, uh, you can hit the cash app, send a super chat, send a super thanks. For those of you who are asking about personal readings and personal questions, if you check the description box, there should be a link to take you to my website where you can book a private reading with me. I'd love to sit with any of you. Happy to do it. Um, and yeah, I think that's about it. So time for this little witch to get her beauty rest. And um, the next time I will be live will be for high tea live uh, on the 20th. No. Yes, on the 20th. The full moon is on the 21st. But I'm going live for high tea on Saturday the 20th at 10 p.m. If you are a coven witch, then you have automatic access to the stream room. You just want to go to the events tab in the coven feed and you'll be able to be in the stream room. You'll be able to ask questions. We are talking about cord cutting, honey, because I had to do a cord cutting for somebody. 
I had to do several for myself in my divorce journey. And boy, did I learn a lot about cord cuttings. And uh, I feel like an expert at them now. Um, so I was honored when my friend came to me and asked me to do one for him. Um, and the results of that are unfolding. So I'm going to be able to show you the work. I'll show you video and pictures. Um, I'll also be able to give you an update on the results. And I will teach you everything I possibly can about successful cord cuttings, what they will do, what they won't do, how to do them effectively. And if you want to be able to ask your own questions and get answers during the Q&A, then you're going to want to be a part of the Coven community and in the stream room. Otherwise, you'll be able to tune in live from YouTube, um, but you won't be able to ask questions and stuff like that. You'll just be watching. So entirely up to you. And if you want to join the coven, the link to that is also down in the description box. So looking forward to seeing you all then. All right, witches, have a beautiful rest of the night. You are so welcome, Sabrina. You're so welcome, Key. Thanks for being here. Blessed be.